The Apple TV is one of my favorite Apple products. In a world of streaming, the Apple TV reigns supreme as the top dog within the streaming box slash streaming stick world. And now, Apple made it even better. But I'll be the first to say that the Apple TV's biggest feature this time around is a price reduction. Kind of crazy coming from a company like Apple and especially considering the sticky inflation that is plaguing not only the US but the whole entire world. I've already unboxed the brand new 2022 Apple TV 4K over on one of my shorts. So I'll attach a card at the top right or you can click the link in the video description. If you've never owned an Apple TV or if it's ever even slightly piqued your interest, now is the perfect time to buy it. In today's video, I'm going to go over everything you need to know about this elusive little streaming box that somehow managed to drop some weight and become even smaller. But don't be fooled, folks. Little doesn't mean weak, as there is tremendous power under the hood here. So, without further ado, let's get the show on the road. Okay, so first things first, we got to cover pricing because even though there's two models, they look nearly identical except for a few key differences. Apple this time around slashed prices by $50 across the board, making the Apple streaming box more accessible to more people and bringing that Apple tax more in line and a bit more reasonable. You can opt for the baseline model, which comes in at just $129, a much more reasonable price tag versus the $179 price tag of the prior model that just seemed really excessive. While it is cheaper, there are some trade-offs that I'll discuss in just a few minutes. The upgraded model is the Apple TV Plus Ethernet, which as the name suggests, comes included with an Ethernet port to hardwire your network connection. The good news is that there is no longer an Apple TV HD option, and no matter which model you get, you will get 4K support alongside HDR support and Dolby Vision, which we've already had before on the prior 4K model, but now the new 2022 Apple TV supports HDR10+, for any of those that plan to view content in all the vivid and bright colors that were originally intended. So it ultimately comes down to preference. I personally don't necessarily need to hook up my ethernet cable to my apple tv my wi-fi is pretty reliable and i don't really have a need for it although i know plenty of people that will for sure find the ethernet port useful it just sucks that you have to fork up slightly more money twenty dollars to be in fact for that privilege but like i said there are a couple other upsides and one of them is that the ethernet apple tv comes with double the storage coming in at 128 gigabytes the baseline model is cheaper, but your storage is slashed in half to a still reasonable 64 gigs. Unless you happen to download a bunch of apps or games, you truly won't need all that storage. I rarely ever play on Apple Arcade, and as far as apps, I mostly only use Netflix, Hulu, and Peacock currently for the World Cup. I'm sure there's a good chunk of people who are in the same boat as I am, so trust me when I say that 64 gigabytes is plenty storage for the average user. Additionally, one other feature you get with the more expensive $150 version is thread support which I will explain towards the end of the review because thread support is the future and is really important if you happen to have a smart home. So apart from that, there's a ton of new changes here, so listen up. Let's start with design as it retains a familiar shape and look only being reduced both in size and weight. Kinda sus, it almost feels too light, but jokes aside, you rarely will ever be holding it in the hands, as 99% of your Apple TV's lifespan will fade away into your entertainment setup anyway. But it is nice to know that Apple's small streaming box takes up even less space for other peripherals such as a sound bar or a gaming console. Up on screen are the official dimensions of the new 2022 Apple TV compared to the last model, but also to get a visual feel for it, it's not only shorter, but also has a slightly tiny tinier form factor as can be seen when stacking both on top of each other. Again, it'll mainly live within your entertainment setup anyway, but I wanted to bring it up as it is important. Okay, but as you probably guessed, the bigger improvements are found under the hood with this all new Apple TV sporting the A15 Bionic chip, which is a pretty big leap from the last iteration Apple TV, which sported the A12, if I'm not mistaken. This is like if the prior A12 Apple TV took some tech steroids and mainly focused on intense cardio sessions. It's rare to see such a jump in chipsets from one Apple product to another, but what this means, for the most part, is that gaming on the Apple TV is now greatly improved. 
removed. This may be an attempt by Apple to push more Apple Arcade subscriptions. And since I have Apple One, as some of you may as well, Apple Arcade comes included with your Apple One subscription, and I can definitely tell a difference. Games just seem much more fluid with less dropped frames. Aside from gaming, the increased power also creates for a more fluid experience while navigating tvOS, which is one of the cleanest operating systems of any streaming platform, and of course, it's ad-free. App icons are big and bold, and there's no confusing layouts like with other competitors. Think about it this way. If you gave this to your grandma, she'd have a decent shot at figuring out how to use it on her own. It's simple, but it's clean and it works. But now, let's discuss the tool you use to navigate said OS. And I'm talking about the Siri remote. For the most part, it looks identical to the prior generation except for one small but very noticeable difference. It now charges via USB-C instead of lightning. This follows Apple's forced direction with implementing and standardizing USB-C across most, if not all, of their products in the near future. This is due to an EU decision that will now force Apple to implement USB-C if they plan to sell iPhones in Europe, which trust me, they sure do. But get this, there's no USB-C cable found anywhere inside the box. So if you don't have one yet, you'll definitely want to get one if you plan to recharge your Siri remote. It just kind of sucks that Apple couldn't have thrown it in there for free, like come on Apple. This really doesn't have much of an impact though, seeing as how the Siri remote battery is phenomenal, easily lasting several months before ever needing to give it some more juice. The buttons on the Siri remote are clear and straightforward and is leagues better than the godforsaken black Siri remote. You know, the one that came with that glass trackpad, man everyone hated that thing. But best of all, the controller is quite comfortable even while gaming, which I have to mention that you are able to use the PlayStation 5's DualSense controller or even the most recent Xbox controller. Just pair them via Bluetooth and you can game on it the same way you would on their respective consoles. And last thing I'll say about the Siri remote, there's two parts to the naming there. It's not just a remote, it's the Siri remote and voice recognition on the Siri remote will give recommendations based off the user, which I think is super cool. Siri still has some catching up to do versus the competition, but let's cut it some slack. It's slowly making some strides now being supported in 30 different countries, and the list of languages it can speak just keeps growing. Siri takes basic commands, like you can ask it to play the latest episode of your favorite show, lower the volume of your TV speakers, ask it to rewind X amount of seconds or minutes, and other basic commands you typically find useful for a TV. Now, before I round out the verdict, I did want to talk about threading support, which most people don't really know what it is, so don't worry, that's what I'm here to do. Basically, thread support is important if you have other smart devices or any kind or combination of smart home setups. Basically, try to think of thread support as a Wi-Fi extender except for extending Wi-Fi signal to other smart devices. So, as an example, imagine you have a smart bulb in your home that tweaks here and there and may not have the best Wi-Fi signal coming to it. Well, if you strategically place a thread support device such as the Apple TV, you can take advantage of the technology here by using the Apple TV to effectively bounce a stronger signal onto that smart bulb so that the signal is being passed at a much better rate. Thread support is slowly becoming the new Wi-Fi standard and it works across not just Apple products but many others like Google for example and also Alexa devices just to name a few. So in the end, what are my thoughts? Look, I'm not going to hold anything back. This is an Apple product you need in your Apple ecosystem and is easily a very strong recommend for me. The integration it has with the Apple ecosystem is impeccable. Like, it's so awesome to quickly airplay a YouTube video to your Apple TV in literal seconds. Or maybe you saw a funny TikTok and want to mirror your iPhone onto the TV via AirPlay. You can do that very easily thanks to the Apple TV. But that's not the only thing, it can detect when AirPods are nearby, and this is extremely useful if you happen to live with roommates or family and don't want to wake them up from loud scenes or other loud noises emitting from your TV. And it's painfully easy to activate, like literally you press one button and now whatever is being played on your TV will pass through to your AirPods so that your TV is silenced Plus, you're still enjoying your show with zero interference. It's simply awesome. Lastly, one last neat thing I love about the Apple TV is how easy it is to enter passwords. Not with the Siri remote because it is a bit more cumbersome to enter a whole email on the remote, but if your iPhone is nearby, you'll get a notification right on your iPhone that you can press to start typing away. The integration with the rest of the Apple ecosystem is just phenomenal. So what's my official verdict? This is hands down a go out and get it now.
a 10 out of 10. If you've never owned an Apple TV, now is the perfect time, especially considering the price reduction, slew of new features, and smaller footprint. What's not to like here? At this point, I really can't think of any negatives, and even if I did, I'd probably just be nitpicking. The Apple TV now is more affordable and thus can reach a wider audience of Apple lovers who have yet to marvel in everything the Apple TV brings to the table. If you currently own an Apple TV, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions down in the comments section below. I do apologize in advance, I will probably be out of town this upcoming weekend, so you'll likely not see uploads from me in your subscription feed for a few days, but don't worry, I'll be back with even more amazing tech content, including my Apple Watch battery drain test, my first ever by the way, a Nintendo Switch OLED review, a retro review, that's a surprise for now, and much, much more. Don't forget to click the like button if you found this video useful, and with that, I'm clocking out for now, but I cannot wait to catch you all in my next video.